Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Honduran court dismisses case against Guapinol activists. Yemen casualties doubled since end of UN monitoring. Libyan parliament elects new prime minister. Trial of coup leader Johnny Nanes suspended in Bolivia. In our first story, the Supreme Court of Honduras has dismissed a case against six environmental activists. The ruling was announced a day after the men were convicted for alleged crimes against a mining company. They were arrested in 2019 for resisting an iron oxide mining project by the ILP company. The open pit mine was located in a protected national park in Tokoa. The park's no development zone was reduced in 2012 to allow mining operations. Road construction in the area contaminated the water in the Guapinol, affecting thousands of people. In 2018, the local community organized a resistance camp which was then violently removed. After spending over two years in detention, a court in Trujillo convicted six activists on February 9th. The charges included the illegal deprivation of liberty and aggravated damages against ILP and its contractor. The trial had been widely condemned by rights bodies and experts for irregularities and judicial bias. The Supreme Court's constitutional chamber has now dismissed the case against the activists. The court unanimously upheld two appeals filed by the six men in 2020 and 21. It affirmed that their due process rights had been violated from the very beginning. The now acquitted activists are part of the Tokoa Municipal Committee for the Defense of Common and Public Goods. In our next story, a report has found that civilian casualties in Yemen have nearly doubled since the UN monitoring process was shut down. The Norwegian Refugee Council has stated that 1,535 civilians have been killed since October 2021. In the four months leading to the end of the UN human rights mandate, the death toll stood at 832. These findings are based on data from the Civilian Impact Monitoring Project. In October, a resolution to extend the, extend the mandate to the Group of Eminent Experts or GEE in Yemen failed in the United Nations. A report by The Guardian later revealed extensive lobbying by Saudi Arabia to shut down the probe leading up to the vote. In 2019, the GEE released a report stating that a Saudi-led coalition had committed serious violations of international law and possible war crimes in Yemen. In 2020, the panel started pushing for accountability. This included a recommendation that the Security Council refer the matter to the International Criminal Court. In the period after the mandate was revoked, 39 times more of civilian casualties were caused by airstrikes. One of the worst such events took place in January, where over 90 people were killed in an attack on a detention facility. Airstrikes and missile attacks have also hit hospitals, telecommunications infrastructure and a water facility. Amid a recent escalation between the Houthis and the Saudi-led coalition, the US has now pledged support to the kingdom. This follows shortly after it announced the deployment of a warship and fighter jets to the UAE. We now go to Libya where the parliament based in the eastern city of Tobruk has elected Fatih Bashaga as a new prime minister. He was the interior minister under the now defunct government of national unity. Bashaga was reportedly chosen unanimously after the second candidate, Khalid al Baybas, withdrew his candidature. The parliament also adopted constitutional amendments on Thursday. This included the formation of a new electoral commission and a 24-member committee to draft a new constitution. The chamber claimed that the committee represented all three regions of Libya. These include Tripolitania, Fezan and Sayernika. Bashaga's election has been welcomed by the Libyan National Army. However, the incumbent interim prime minister Abdul Habib Dabeba has refused to step down. He has stated that he will only hand over power to an elected government. He has also proposed a new electoral law and scheduling parliamentary elections in June. The UN has stated that it will continue to recognize Dabeba's government. He was elected interim prime minister after the Libyan political dialogue forum in 2021. This was part of a years-long UN-backed process to bring an end to the war and insecurity in the country. However, opposition to Dabeba grew after the failure of the government to hold elections in December as per its mandate. He had also announced his candidacy for president, despite promising not to do so during his appointment. And finally, we go to Bolivia, where the criminal trial of Johnny Nanez has been suspended. The first oral trial against the former coup-installed president was set to begin virtually on February 10th. However, the opening order has been challenged by her defence team. It argued that it had been issued by a substitute court and one of the judges had a dissenting vote. The appeal was granted and no new date has been set for the trial. Thursday's proceedings would have focused on what is called the coup d'etat 2 case. Anes has been named alongside former military commanders including Pastor Mendieta. They stand accused of breach of duties and resolutions contrary to the constitution for the November 2019 coup, which ousted President Evo Morales. As proceedings were set to begin on Thursday, hundreds of people gathered in La Paz demanding that Anes be held accountable. She has been placed in preventive detention since her arrest in March 2021. She also stands accused of crimes of sedition, terrorism and conspiracy in another case called Coup d'etat 1. The coup period was marked by severe violence including the Senkata and Sakaba massacres. 
Anes is facing charges of genocide in a separate case related to the killings. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.